up, everybody? It's time for Bid Nerds, your daily nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is JP John Polnick. There's my little lower third that says so, along with my partner, Michael Deeb in San Francisco. How are you, my brother? Dude, I'm so happy we're doing the show again. We took a week off because you had to drive your brand new air cooled 911 all over the western everything west of the mississippi how many states did you drive through four or five that's a good question i gotta count Six? them up i went uh let's see you started out in idaho uh saw my very uh-huh. good friend kelly smith who was uh him and i have been going back and forth on his beautiful car look uh check out uh Der fascination check out uh the or the Dur or die porsche podcast there's an episode uh-huh. With Kelly Smith in this particular car from years ago, I've been wanting this oh. car uh, ever since he got this thing. Uh, like I don't know, 12, 13 years ago, something like that. You, in you coveted it. I have uh, yes, uh, secret <laughs> to steal it from. Uh, so he yeah. was kind enough to uh, get me sorted out on that. So I went out, uh, stayed at his place uh, with his lovely family in Idaho and Boise, uh, Idaho, yep. uh, and directly so into State Washington. One. Yeah, then yep. uh, drove into Oregon, actually. You go through Oregon ah, to get there. Uh, up to so Washington. So eastern Oregon, where I ran out of gas, uh, not realizing that the <laughs> gas gauge stopped at half a tank. Uh, it's funny. I was driving for an hour and a half, and the fuel gauge just <laughs> didn't move from that point. Hey, I want to just, you know, we always shout out companies that we like, but I got a pet peeve with AAA. Um, oh. <laughs> are, you a, are you a AAA member? Nope. Oh, oh, yes, I am. Actually, I am because oh, okay. I own Italian. I own a bunch of Italian cars. But I shared with you, and I know we're deviating from your state count. But I shared with you when you told me that you ran out of gas and AAA left you in a hundred degree heat on the side of the road because the car hadn't been registered in your name. I realized while I was listening to your story that the last time I called AAA, they left me hanging. On a Friday afternoon in Marin County, I mean, in the middle of civilization, you were out in the middle of nowhere. I was in the middle of civilization. They left me hanging for seven hours with like a 12 month pregnant wife. She was ready to murder me. And as such, my penance is I have to sell my Mercedes because it hung us out to dry. But it was AAA that hung us out to dry. So I, look, I agree. I've been a they're, fan they're of AAA awful. for years, but they ha- they now suck. It, look, I know a lot of you nerds out there, uh, you guys have you know bought old cars in the past and stuff like that. It yeah. used to be they just show up, right? You got a problem, yep. they bring send you gas or a tow truck or whatever. Now they're like, is the car in your name? Is it currently <laughs> registered? Does it cur-? I'm like, no, yeah. I just bought it. I have the title of the bill sale. It's my car. Yeah. Documents. Uh, but it's a Sunday. You know, I can't, Shh. even if I want, I, I couldn't. So they're like, sorry, sir, our terms of agreement. I went to three supervisors and they're all like, sorry, sir. They left me on the side of the road. So AAA can That's suck at you guys. I literally got on the interwebs, found the low, the, the closest gas station, like 10 miles away out in the middle of nowhere, uh, and paid some kid like a hundred dollars to bring me some gas. And his uh, father just, showed his up, his dad showed his up, father yeah. showed up for the hundred bucks, which is hilarious. I Ten hope minutes. that. I hope that everybody in the offices at Haggerty are preparing an offer to us now, knowing that we're bagging on AAA, um, because any company, any company would be better than AAA at this point. Uh, left me hanging, left my partner hanging. I'm shocked. Uh, if you have also recently been been hung out to drive by AAA, do mention it in the uh, comments because we'd love to hear the story and know that we're not the only two people that have been picked on by the man. It's just crazy. I mean, their whole thing is service. I can't believe. They let you, they said no to you and left you sit in a hundred degree plus heat. That seems unsafe and inhumane. Like if you if you're driving and a car rolls in front of you, you're supposed to stop and get out and help. Like that's that's the decorum of the American public. Like for that company to not send somebody to you, I mean, you know, what if you had patootie in the car? Like you know, like that, that's yeah. a, it's actually a dangerous situation. Yeah. I'm pissed. I, you know, here I thought I was covered. I've been a member for decades. Uh, Unbelievable. Screw you, AAA. Screw you. Um, yeah. And we're going to take every opportunity we can to knock AAA. Uh, okay, yeah. that said, that's not why you came uh, to Bidner to hear a rant about how crappy yeah. AAA has become. They used to be awesome, now they suck. Uh, but uh, we, what we do on the show uh, is we dig through all the automotive enthusiast auction sites like Bring a Trailer, Picar Market, and more. Uh, we find the most interesting car of the day. We have a conversation about that car, uh, Michael Deeb and I, and then we make a prediction as to what's going to happen with that car on its 
auction. Uh, and then we, I don't know, what do we do? We travel into the future. Uh, sure. And at the end of the episode, we will tell you what happens at the end of the auction. We'll tell you how much the car sells for. So at the time that we Magic. record this show, uh, we don't know. Uh, but by the time the show's over, we will. And so will you. So uh, let's get to it right after you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. Michael Deeb, today's car is indeed an interesting one uh, and very, very cool as well. What do we got here today? JP, here's the hot rod dilemma. Okay, so somebody took this 914 and uh, and then made it a 914.6 with a 3.2 liter from a Carrera, and they put the GT flares on it. The car is achingly beautiful, but I would also say that it, it, as as he goes down the road of like flares and chrome wheels and like an orange stripe and an unusual colorway, um, that he's narrowing the appeal and making this car niche in the open market. And so I just wonder if this car had just been painted like, you know, signal orange or something, if it wouldn't bring more money. On P car market is this 1973 Porsche 914 3.2 GT, uh, you know, tribute car. Uh, it's offered to us out of Westwood, Maryland. Uh, it's showing 1,100 miles on the odometer, but it's true mileage unknown. Uh, the build looks like it was done to a very nice le uh, level, and um, there's clear audio in the driving video, and it sounds like the motor is running beautifully and exactly as it should. But I would say that a lot of money has been spent on this car. Um, in fact, they claim to have spent over $100,000 on it. And John, before we even get to the money, I can tell you right now, he's not going to bring hundred grand for this car. I just... And, it, and it's a shame because you can see the money spent, but I don't see a path to which he's going to retrieve it. Um, this is absolutely a car I would love to own. Uh, limited slip differential, boxer brakes uh, with Carrera discs, um, uh, the composite GT flares, 16-inch uh, Fuchs, uh, which were never on the car, um, Vaughn and Coney shock absorber, hypercoil springs. So those were custom cut for this car. They're not something that's off the shelf. And then a lot of the rest of the adjustable suspension came from Elephant Racing. They make absolutely top quality stuff. So this car goes, handles, and stops probably better than any air-cooled out there. I, I, would, I would argue that this car could probably keep up with a 993 um, on a professor run JP if you know what I'm talking about like this this car probably works but this marathon blue this metallic light blue and the painted on orange stripe that in this instance can't be undone I just wonder if that just makes the the audience that he's truly appealing to too narrow to achieve the money that uh, he spent on the car um, and uh, and I'm going to go ahead and stand behind that when I give you my bid but JP I'm telling you that daddy wants one. This car is freaking hot. I, I love it. I, I want mine to be like this, but I'll, I'll take mine in a flat color. Thank you very much. Where are you at on this? Yeah. I mean, when it comes to colorways, you always have to be conservative if you're planning on selling the car, right? I mean, I don't know why anyone would paint on stripes in this day and age. I know why they did it back in the day because it was hard, you know, that's the only way you could do it back in the 70s, right? Now yeah. with vinyl technology, you can make any shape, color, design you want. Uh, so, you know, paint your car color. I mean, I don't think this color is a problem. Uh, the car color, that is. Uh, but having the stripe on there as a permanent feature uh, seems just silly uh, well, to me. And he's, he's going for a golf livery, but he's not using golf blue. So yeah. he's, you know, he's painted himself, you know, between two places. And, and I just, you know, like I said, I and just the, think it's going to hurt him. And the application of that, of that color combination, too. It's like that stripe is it's kind of a weird application of the stripe. The rock guard on the rear fender looks weird to me. And I, I it doesn't hope fit. that's it, vinyl. Um, yeah. Because that is totally wrong and just it's not functional it doesn't look right it's just goofy uh and i think a rock guard you know shark fin on the back of one of these could look really great this car it looks like it's probably spectacular it's got some other weird details that shift knob like it's got all this really cool stuff the seats and the seat belts and the steering wheel and then yeah. it's got like this like roll bar like a, well i mean the roll bar thing is fine because it's functional but this the the, the the, the shift knob looks like it's one from an O'Reilly's or something like that. It's just it's silly it's from Wevo. It's thing. from Wevo. It's it Wevo's Wevo light. Yeah, it's really it's really weird. But it does have a Wevo shifter. It's got a roll bar in it, and and Are you you know, the sure Momo that shift wheel. knob is from Wevo. 
I think so. I think Wick has one just like it. No, yeah. no, no, no way. Don't. I mean. Oh no! I got another picture. No, that's not yeah. it. That's not the one. Weevo makes one that has Weevo holes makes some cool drilled stuff. in it. Yeah, that's uh, not that what this is. Drilled I'm in sorry, it. I'm, that, I'm looking it. at a small picture, and you know, uh, I'm getting blind here in my old age. So no, that's not what I thought it was. So I take that all back. That's not what Wick has. Yeah, that's this is like I mean, that's garbage. That carbon that, fiber plastic. Yeah, it's stupid. It's, it's not even not period correct. Car, yeah. 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 So uh, this is what I'm saying. This guy swung and he made a car that he likes. But now when he goes to turn around and sell it, he's narrowed the market of appeal for this car and he's not going to get his money for it. Um, you know, if somebody's lucky, the reserve is low and they can snatch this car because you couldn't replicate it for the money that it's going to bring. Um, whatever this car sells for, I'm sure there's twice as much money in it. Mm, and the driving video with him leaving his hand on that ugly shift lever uh, and his left hand at the 12 o'clock. Yeah. Guido. Uh, what a tool shed. Um, there's nothing worse than a driving video like this that shows you the type of owner you were talking about. This guy did all this great work. I mean, it looks like the car was sitting in a collection of some really cool cars, but this is not a good owner. Uh, bad, bad owner. Bad guy. Not doing it right. Um <laughs> 914s as a as a matter of as a car in general we you and I love 914s um, mm -hmm. at the end of this very show in the credits uh, there's video of me driving a 914 from our good friend uh, Matthew Weitzel let me borrow his little 17 uh, up in Oregon and it was one of the best driving days of I used I chose that particular video <laughs> because it was one of the best driving moments of my entire life. It was just everything was That's just awesome. Zen and out on us, right? Shout uh, out to Matt Weitzel, who's a great yeah, guy. Yeah, who uh, will be in studio later for Dur or Die Porsche podcast uh, that we're going to record later tonight. Um, but Sweet. you know, I mean, our good friends at uh, God and Porsche they just restored that uh, limited edition Bumblebee Porsche, and mm -hmm. we saw it Spect on the spectacular restoration yeah absolutely like, stunning you could shave in the reflection of the paint that's how far they went with it uh that being said i don't suspect that they will recoup the money they invested in that car anytime soon yeah i mean it's just it's it's too good right i mean 914s over restored knows 914s yeah. know that they were never that good in the first place Porsche nope. did not make those cars uh, like no. all the other Porsches. We love 914s. We're not knocking 914s, uh, but they're more Volkswagen than than Porsche. Let's face it. Um, yeah. And so, if you're going to spend all that money, it better be on something that you're going to keep uh, and love forever. Uh, this particular car uh, looks like something that. Uh, I mean, geez, look at. Okay, I got to bring this up. Look. Look at that shark fin that we were talking about earlier. And yeah, I noticed some, some of the other pictures. The, the line isn't even parallel with the fender. I, and there's something weird going on with these fender cuts, too. It's like it, they're not a factory. They're not exact. It looks like. Yeah. It looks like, you know, the Roe Welt guy <laughs> just like cutting him with a Sawzall or something. So as much as we say this car That's is an nice, insult the to, more, to him, though. Yeah, I'm like. Yeah. I don't know about this car. How well was it done? I'm. Yeah, yeah maybe it wasn't know. even done great. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think? Where's this thing going to land? What's going to happen with the auction on this car? So, JP literally, with just a couple of days to go on P Car Market and offered out of somewhere in the middle of Maryland, um, is this 914.6 with a 3.2 and the GT flares. Our car is sitting at just $27,000 on 11 bids on p car market and i don't think i think this car is going to wind up in the deal tank for like a hundred grand hmm. um but along the way i think it's going to peter out and fail to sell at i'm going to go fifty nine thousand dollars and where's it at right now twenty seven thousand dollars yeah i'm i don't even think this thing breaks 40. um i okay. think it goes for what the engine's worth uh so i'm gonna say 40. Um, yeah, okay. You're right. It's going straight to deal tank and straight deal tank for is, an obscene number. An obscene yeah. number. Not this car's DOA as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Are we totally off? Are are you know? I know we're going to be accused of not loving 914s, and let's be very very clear. Both, That's you not know, the case. Uh, my first Porsche was a 914. I love 914s. I just think that this particular one. 
as cool as it is on paper uh, is just not there uh, and uh, it's going to suffer. Uh, and, you know, PCAR market has had some really great results lately. Uh, but typically PCAR market, when they do well, when they knock one out of the park, it's on a factory car. Most of the stuff that <laughs> they do really well with are like when they get something that's like spot on, like a, like a GT2 that's like totally factory or a singer that's not necessarily factory, right. but perfect, perfect restorations. Anytime they get something weird, they don't tend to do well with weird. Um, you know, you need a bigger audience mm-hmm. to get the weirdos to buy something, and PCAR market doesn't have this. So I think this car is uh, this car is in trouble. Uh, I think the uh, the auction is. Yeah, I agree trouble. with you. Yeah, uh, I agree so with what you. Do It'll be you interesting think? to see which one of us is closer to the final result on this yeah. one. Because it's gonna be really hard to tell what the market thinks it's worth and what he thinks it's worth. Um, but the, what the good thing with PCAR market is we'll know both because when this car fails to sell, it will wind up in the deal tank for what he thinks it's worth. So yeah. You we'll know, have that answer. If you're watching the show, play along with us, right? When we're recording this, we don't know what the car is going to sell for. Uh, so if you're this far into the show, put it in the comments. What's your guess? Uh, you know, yeah. put that in the comments. Let's see how good you are at this. Put it in the comments. Yeah. Put your money where your mouth is, just like we do. Uh, what do you think this car will close for? Uh, and then uh, stick around after the break, and we'll tell you, and you'll be able to play the game much easy, much more easily than we do. We have to wait a week uh, before <laughs> we know, uh, but you are going to find out how much this car sells for or fails to sell for right after this. Okay, guys, I want to tell you about Vegas Auto Fest. The drivers are coming. This is one of our big sponsors. It's the biggest car show of the year in Las Vegas. It's one of the coolest car shows you can possibly experience anywhere. If you haven't made plans to be part of Vegas Auto Fest on September 17th, then do it now. Go to VegasAutoFest.com and register your car. You think you're a car enthusiast? Doesn't matter where you live, plan a trip to Vegas, on September 17th and come out and see this show. It's like Monterey Car Week all in a day. Have you ever been to the Quail? Have you ever been to Works Reunion? Have you ever been to Amelia Island? All those car shows are amazing and great. Have you been to Luftkult? Sure, but Vegas Auto Fest is something special. Make a plan for September 17th. We'll see you in Vegas. Hey, what are you doing? That was a really fast commercial. Like that happened (laughs) so fast. That was like right. a, that was like 60 seconds for us. It was days and days and days because we just fast forwarded through into the future to find out what happened with this 914 and its auction. We're going to tell you uh, in just a second. But first, make sure you hit the subscribe, like and notification button. Uh, spread the word. Share a nerd. I don't know. I'm messing up our own like stuff. Grow the herd. Nerd. You did it Grow right. the herd. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. No, seriously, guys, we know that uh, people are watching but they're not subscribing. So subscribe for crying out. Come on, subscribe, share one of these videos that really helps out. Uh, and it, uh, makes this channel possible. We want to grow this channel and make it bigger and better. Um, Hey guys, what do you think of this format? You know, it, for those of you who are early adopters, some of you were here before when we used to do this. We used to do the show daily and we used to do it live and we did multiple cars a day. Um, which, as you can imagine, it was a lot of work, and we'd probably prefer to do it that way. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we just don't have the time. We need to grow the channel. So that's why uh, some of, some people are asking us why we only do one car a day. Uh, it was just a mechanism that we could uh, still come out with daily content. Uh, but, uh, but listen, we got we to gotta grow the size of the channel, and we need your help to do it. So please, subscribe, share Share an episode. Tell some people about the show. Yeah, uh, talk Let about people it. know what's up. Comment below. That stuff really, really, really does help us. There's only a few of you out there right now. So any little thing you do, if you comment, that really helps the show. If you if you share an episode, it's amazing how much what that does for the algorithm. Uh, really, seriously, guys, we can use your help. We love doing the show for you. We want you to be a part of it. Uh, we have, we're going to be building a newsletter soon uh, at, our, at our website. We're building the new website. So we'll be able to uh, kind of give you our, our top picks of the week before we even publish the shows. So you'll be able to, uh, for those of you who want to join the community, you guys will be able to kind of like 
be a part of it. You'll be an inside nerd kind of thing. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, inside I don't know nerd. if that's a good thing or not. But yeah. anyways, guys, all right, that's enough of that. Uh, let's get to this car. What happened with this 914.6, Michael Deeb? Well, you know, it's funny. After you and I covered the car, um, we were both so bearish on it that I actually changed my bid. And then you were super bearish because you bid like 20 grand underneath me. Uh, so, JP, you said 40,000. I said 59,000. Remember, this car is on P Car Market. It sold for 59,000. I got a Yahtzee, my friend. Uh, wow. That. Yeah, I got a Yahtzee. For those of you uh, the, watching, a Yahtzee means he, he guessed it guessed exactly it. correct. Yes. That's you, pretty amazing. My negativity, um, coupled with your negativity, got me <laughs> to change my bid to exactly what it's going to be. So, I. I Nostra Dom that damn thing. Uh, 31 bids. It's sold for that price. Um, I Listen, a, a cool car, a cool build. Uh, some of the details were a little suspect. I think you and I were a little critical, some of the details. But at 59 grand, John, I'd say there's enough there that you can maybe go correct some of the problems with this car and still be ahead on the money. Because I think if you're starting with a 914 and you're going to graft on um, the fender flares, which is the biggest thing, and start doing bodywork and paint, you're in for a lot of money. That expense has been done. I think you could correct the, the rest of the stuff for a little bit of money and wind up with a good car for well under hundred grand. So I'd say it was still well bought. Um, I, I don't think it was well sold. If the guy who sold it is the one that built it, he did not get his money back. So anyway, there you go. What are you going to say? Yeah, no way I'm paying this much for this car, but... I don't think it's terrible. I mean, for that money, mm -hmm. you couldn't build it. Uh, I mean, you right. got a you got a three two in there. Yeah, uh, that's worth a pretty penny. Uh, this thing's got to be just an absolute blast to rip around. So I, you know, I mean, the thing is, for for that much money, you could probably, I know for a fact, you could find yourself a a Carrera. You know, uh, an 84 to call it 86, <laughs> 911, probably, you know, you're probably not going to find a G50 car, but you could mm -hmm. easily find a Targa or something like that. Maybe not a coupe, but hey, this thing's a Targa, you know, for somewhere in that 50,000, 60,000 range. And I'd way rather, if I'm going to spend the money, I'm going to spend that money eh, getting a 911. Uh, there's just yeah. no way around it. I mean, if you're adding to a collection, you don't have a 911 already, or, or you don't have a 914, you already have a 911. Well, okay, this would be a cool thing to add to it. Um, but I just don't see this car as being the kind of car that someone wants to add to their collection because it's so cool. It's more of this is kind of a value way to get into something that is perceived as probably more expensive. You know, you yeah. see a 914.6 and you think, oh, that's a hundred and plus thousand dollar car. Well, you know, not so much. Yeah, I, I'd this one. I, I like your take. I, I just to reframe it. I think if you're spending sixty thousand dollars, you could have your pick of nine out of the ten SCs you might find available in the marketplace. Yeah, and uh, and your ninth best SC in the marketplace is going to be a better car than this. So yeah, you know, I it, it's a tough sell. It's a niche sell. Uh, even more niche with this weird paint job and the painted stripes. I. And don't just the poor wrong. execution of, of get, the aesthetics. Don't of get me wrong. Just all yeah, up. but if you're gonna build a 946 GT, uh, you're in for 100 grand. This guy did the 100 grand for you, and you could pick it up for 60, and then I think you could clean the rest of it up. Uh, but that's a that's a really niche buy. I think for for 60 grand, you're gonna get a really nice SC and be a happier camper, and, and your money's safer anyways. Could so, you not you get the nicest SC Targa? Uh, and yeah, sure, an SC could. Target only has yeah. a three liter versus this three two, but come on, yeah. I mean an SC yeah. Target, give me a break. Who wants this over mm -hmm. an SC Target? Uh, yeah. I, I don't get it. But all right, well, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, is a nine fourteen six that's kind of bastardized and poorly executed? Is that worth more than uh, an SC Target or maybe even a, a high mileage? Excuse me, call it uh, you know Carrera <laughs> or something like that. I don't yeah. know. Um, Let's hear in the comments below. We had Matthew Weitzel uh, in the studio earlier this week when we were uh, filming Dur or Die. It's a check out the Dur or Die Porsche podcast. It's another brand new channel that uh, Dwayne Wick and I just started, uh, and actually we're going to be recording after this session a little later. So check out Porsche the uh, Dur or Die Porsche podcast. Uh, on the YouTube machine and subscribe to that channel as well if you don't mind. Uh, but in the meantime, Michael Deep, what do you think? We out of uh, here. Yeah, let's go. Home.
Get those words!